Commentaries from the Heart with Father Antonio Agnes. Today is Monday of the 20th week of Ordinary Time. We also celebrate the memorial of Pope Pius X. Friends, the first reading is from Judges chapter 2, verses 11 to 19, and the Gospel from Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 to 22. Today we begin reading from the book of the Judges. As you are aware, since Easter, the church has guided us to chronologically, which means one by one, systematically, uh, to read from Genesis. We have read till we finished the first five books of Moses. We have gone to Joshua. Now we are in Judges. So already from Genesis to Judges, seven books, the first seven books in the Bible we are already reading. Friends, it is important that as the church takes our hand uh, to go through uh, these readings, we also take time to read them. Obviously, we don't read uh, from page to page. The church only selects the important lessons from these books and gives them to us uh, as examples to encourage us in our spiritual journey, on our spiritual journey. So, find time, read with the church, and even the passages that we would not read in church, find time to read them personally for yourself. It will help you. You grow in the faith. And so, in Judges, we are already in chapter 2. And it's interesting, at the beginning of this book, the Judges, we are told that the people, the generation that came after Joshua and his people, did not know God. Very sad. Very sad. You see, when men and women, when we forget God, is the beginning of our ruin, our ruin, as we say, and the beginning of our downfall. And so because this new generation of Israel did not know God, already their downfall was ahead of them. What happened? Why did they not know God? We are not told, but possibly, maybe their parents, the generation before them, did not hand over to them God. Parents, this is our work. When we fail to direct our children, church, priest, this is our work. When we fail to lead the people of God and let them know the ways of God, they go wayward. We can also be held responsible because somehow their parents and their elders before them did not tell them who God was to them. So this generation didn't know about God and what he did for them in the land of Egypt, we are told. So what did they do? They now go for their own gods. The Bible says, I mean the reading says, they went, they followed Baal, Baals. The word Baal means Lord. And so the Judges, book of Judges is telling us that these people, this new generation of Israel, were following different lords, different masters, different bows. Do you have a bow also in your life? Do you also follow a different lord and master? God is our lord and master. He is our God. Whenever we choose to follow other people, Whenever we choose to follow other circumstances, whenever we feel to give ourselves answers to the problems we face, do it our own way, like the Israelites, we are also following our vows. What is your vow? What is the Lord of your life today? Is it your work, your position, your wealth, your money? What is it? Let us be aware that these vows, these lords, these masters, can eventually lead us astray, take our focus from God. And so the people of Israel indeed went astray. They forgot God and went after Baals. What was the consequence? They were punished. The enemies got hold of them. You see, friends, whenever we fail to follow God's will and his will, what happens? We get in trouble. Our lives start crumbling. Things start not going well. Our enemies start engaging us. And so it was the story of the Israelites. The enemies around them were now ruling them, defeating them. But see, friends, as we know, our God is a father. He never forgets his people. God always provides. So even when they have disobeyed God and went astray, 
we are told in the same reading from Judges that God sends judges to rescue them. Obviously, when the name of the word, the word judges to us today has a connotation of somebody who decides on something. But this is what the meaning here. The judges used in this book of the judges refers to um, save a savior. The judges were those who were sent by God to lead them in wars, warlords. So here, when you read the judges and you say somebody is a judge in this book of judges, I mean the person was a war leader, a warlord, was a savior sent to lead them in battle to defeat their enemies. And so God keeps sending them judges upon judges. This book of judges, which we are going to read for the next four days, actually will mention 12 judges. 12. He sent them 12 judges. Interesting, the number 12 represents a new community. So God was trying to build a new community with them. It represents the church, which is actually the true judge of God on earth. Because with the church, which is the judge of the earth, the judge of the world, we are able to fight the battles of life. This is beautiful, friends. You see, the Bible is not just a book we read with our English background and understanding of the language. It's more profound. By giving judges to the people of Israel and giving them specifically 12 judges, which stand for the church, which is built on 12, 12 stones, 12 disciples, it was indeed the church that becomes the judge of the world. When the church leads us in battles, like the judges who led the Israelites in battles, we shall conquer. Allow the church to guide you. Come to the church to judge you means to lead you to fight your battles of life. My friends, even with this help from the judges God gave them, the people still did not follow his ways. The cycle continues. They keep sinning. God comes to rescue them. They keep sinning. God comes to rescue them. God will never forget us. Even when we fail, God will not forget us. When we fail to do our part, he will still care for us. He will still provide for us. We pray that when God comes to our rescue, through the church, we will not give a blind eye, but will open wholeheartedly to God to use us, to use the church to come into the space of our lives. Friends, the gospel reading is one that is also quite interesting uh, because it tells us of a story that we well know. You know, in this gospel reading, we are told that there was this young man who came to Jesus with a request. He wants to be perfect, beautiful, perfection. Today, many women do not seek to be perfect. We seek to be perfect in other areas of life, but not with things of God. But here comes this young man, we are told he was a youth, that he wants to be perfect. Of course, he was a youth by age, but understanding here is not just a youth by age. It means more. We are not talking about the youth who are between some particular ages. This man, the youth who came to Jesus, stands for all of us. Because a youth is somebody who is still growing. He's growing into adulthood. And friends, in the Christian life, we are all youths because we are growing in the faith. So we are all youth in the faith. We only become adults in the faith when we are with God in heaven. So no one is an adult in the faith because we have not completed the journey. We are growing. And so this youth, this young man who came to Jesus in today's reading, stands for all of us. Men, women, priests, lay people, good men, who are good women, who are doing their best to grow in their faith. They want to be more. They want to get closer to Jesus. So they ask, what more should I do? And Jesus tells him, go and then obey the, the commandments. He says, look, I have done everything. I don't know whether you have qualified this stage already. For me, it's difficult to even answer. But this man was sincere. He had done something. He had something to prove to God that he loves him. But Jesus said it's not enough. Sometimes the temptation is that we think uh, that as Christians, we should be doing more of good works and the works and the works and the works, and that is enough. No. You see, he asked him to go and sell his belongings and give to the poor after he said he has done by following the commandments. That's how it is. It is only 
the second part of the journey. So you can't be going around doing charity, charity, and you think that it's not for me to be perfect. No. You need to be also follow the commandments at this mandate. In the same way, you can't always be just be following law and trying to follow the laws and without doing charity. No. You need to also be charitable to your brothers and sisters. That is how it is. To the poor, they are the two legs of faith. Prayer and uh, action. Prayer and then action. So this man had done a lot of prayer. He needs some action. We pray that we will not concentrate only on the prayer aspect of our faith, neither on the only the action aspect of our faith, but together with prayer and action, we become perfect. Don't forget, the man wanted perfection. The young man wanted perfection. Do you want to be perfect? Pray and then act. Both together, gradually, with the help of God, you will grow to become an adult of the faith. Then Jesus asked him to come and follow him. I think this is where the problem arose. He couldn't do that because when Jesus says, come and follow me, it's not just means come and just walk behind me. No, it means come and follow in my footsteps. And what do you know? Jesus always walks with his cross. And so this young man knew that he understood immediately that Jesus was calling him to come and carry his cross after him. He couldn't. He wanted to have an easy life. You see, when you want to be perfect, you are going to have crosses. Because you have to follow Jesus. Don't let the crosses that you carry, because these crosses can come for your own family, your own friends, the situations you are. Don't let them dis- deter you, deter you, as you say, distract you from following Jesus. He says, come and follow me. Today, Jesus invites us to also carry our crosses. The challenges around us, which sometimes put us away from reaching out to him. He will guide us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your, your word. May you help us to be not just listeners, but also doers. You are the grace to pray. You are the grace to act. Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise be Jesus Christ.